don't even have to replace the tank. We can just mount it right. Mm -hmm. So right now, as you can hear, but not see, there we go. So we're putting this wood in a two by four, I believe through up top so that we can strap our expansion tank uh, to it, just to take some weight off of that. Um, we already soldered in that ball, soldered in that ball valve. So that's just for extra support. We're gonna strap it. You'll see the finished product. All right, now we're gonna to toss that in, solder him, and hold him up with that. That's the hope, at least. There we go. You can take that out. This is the expansion tank we were talking about earlier. Um, anyway, there, now you know what it is. Many older systems will have a giant metal tank um, in the ceiling. Um, it doesn't work quite the same way, but it does the same thing. So both have pros and cons, but um, if you do have one of those old metal ones that are really long, it's probably like I don't know, 30 gallons or 20 gallons, 50 gallons, depends on the tank. Uh, you do want to empty that regularly. Um, somewhat regularly, not weekly or anything, but maybe annually. And uh, you're going to have to turn the, the valve off that goes to it and then drain it out. There will be a spigot valve on it. Shouldn't be too complicated. We'll put a picture on screen of what that looks like, um, the older style one. Okay. Now this solder will be seeing water, so we're going to be working hard to make this uh, a good one. We're also, after this video, gonna stain and paint that wood so it matches. <laughs> We're not doing that. Just in case you didn't realize.
think it's good. Looks like we got a good bead all the way around. Maybe missing a little there. He's going to get it. I believe it's all the way around. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's that. I'll check it out. It's good. Easy. Not the most ideal height for the expansion tank. We probably could have put it a little higher, but it was already like that, and we didn't want to have to solder more than we needed to for the customer's sake as well as our own time. So, so we're gonna replace this leaf valve, or relief valve. Um, it was leaking while we're here. He also had a leaky valve that went to his uh, expansion tank, and his expansion tank was sideways. Um, sideways will work, but the manufacturer, um, of the expansion tank says they like it to be up and down, whether that be, uh, upside down or hanging down. Um, so we're just going to replace this quick. We already drained off all the pressure. Um, just take it off, tape dope, throw this thing on, and we're going to solder. Um, we already soldered our ball valve, new ball valve in, but we're going to solder the rest of our expansion tank in, and then we'll be out here, hopefully. Um, there is a chance that the fast fill is bad, but um, it looks fairly new, so we're going to make sure it's not bad at the end, but I don't believe it is. We may get a little water out of here, so I'm going to try and be quick, but I've been known to be very, very slow. There is, I'm sure you can't see, but there is some corrosion in there, so that's another... Just to tell, it doesn't mean it's bad, but um, it most likely is. It was just dripping, so let's replace them. I paused it when you went out. So we got the new relief on, threw it on quick. Um, there wasn't much water. When we got here, the customer was complaining that the relief valve was dripping. Um, most of the time, that actually doesn't mean that your relief valve is bad. However, sometimes it does, and in this case, we believe it was bad. Um, and if it is dripping, it's it's not really supposed to be used very often, so a lot of times they'll continue to drip. Um, but often it's a bad fast fill or a bad expansion tank when you have a dripping relief or a relief going and blowing off at 30 PSI. Um, but anyway, we got this one on. Um, we replaced the dripping gate valve above head. We're going to put the expansion tank on with that. Um, so we'll show you that here in a second. And also the... Uh, the drip leg for this expansion, or for this relief valve, was too small. It was half inch, and this is a three quarter relief valve, so we're going to replace that as well. It's not like it has to grab like crazy or anything. It should never see water. As long as it's connected. This fitting I'm just going to dope because it's never really going to see water. And if it does, um, there's a big issue anyway. And it's going to be dumping water out the side of the boiler. So we're not super concerned with it being as tight or as leak proof as possible. Did you clean it yet? So if you have that your relief valve, which is this valve right here, it'll often be on top of your boiler. If you find that that is blowing off water onto the floor, um, you most likely have one of three things. Either one, your fast fill is bad, which is what takes the city pressure water to your boiler 
and regulates it down to right around 12 PSI um, for the boiler system. Your expansion tank, which is a big green tank that has a diaphragm in it that allows for, obviously when the water is hot or cold, it has different pressures and different sizes. It'll expand um, to allow for that difference in pressures and temperatures, um, as well as it could also just be a bad relief valve. Um, so we like to replace or all three whenever we have this issue, just so we don't have a callback. But if it's for your own house or um, you see one that is obviously bad, um, obviously you can just replace one. But it's best practice, I would say, to probably replace all three unless you're very confident that um, only one of them would be bad or more two of the three. So we're gonna solder this pipe on real quick. Shouldn't be too difficult. We've actually been to this house before. Um, he had a leak in his, I believe, domestic coil. I'm not certain, but we put some boiler seal in it and fixed him right up. But uh, this boiler has seen better days. That is for sure. I'm going to dab this on here. This is not cold water. You do not want to rapidly, um, with really cold water, do anything to your solder. You want to let it do it on its own. I just like to dab it a little bit, but um, not my best solder job, but hopefully it wasn't too uh, painful on the eyes. Now we'll do this elbow. should be a little easier. Well, that first one doesn't get too much easier than that. That's it. All we have left, as long as, Lord willing, the fast fill is good. We just gotta throw on that trip leg there. Take that to six inches off the floor and then we'll be out of here. So we're cleaning the drip leg. I don't know if that's actually what you call it, but whatever. And it's going on the bottom here. So one last solder. Caleb's gonna fill the boiler. Well, he already did, but now we're gonna have to drain the air out that we let in. So he's gonna open up one by one each zone and let it rip. Let's show them that. That's way more interesting than cleaning a pipe. Okay. So he's opening up there on the return. And in this bucket, that hose might try to jump out. Might go nuts. No nutsiness yet. So a quick recap with everything we did on this job. We removed the expansion tank from there in that sideways position, mounted it here. We didn't replace it because 
Um, it wasn't full of water, so it's still pressurized. Seems to be good, not too old. New ball valve there. Left the fast fill as well because the gauge is inaccurate. And we got our new relief valve, plumbed in a new pipe there for it to drop into that bucket if it ever goes off. We bled the system with that shut off, opened up the zone valves one at a time and turned on the power and we're good to go.